If you want to learn how to minimize your filament waste in multicolor prints, then stick around. Hey everybody, my name is Rick and welcome back to Directed Tech. Today we're going to talk about ways to minimize filament waste in multicolor prints. I'm going to give you five tips. Actually, it's about four and a half. The last one's a little bit of a, it's just kind of a bonus, but tips on how to minimize your waste when you're doing multicolor prints. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the computer. We're going to actually create some 3D models. I'd like to thank our sponsor for today, Hyper 3D. Um, but we're going to create some models. We're going to look at different ways to print these things. And uh, again, let's learn a little bit together on how to minimize the waste. All right, the first tip is to only use two colors. Now, I know that probably sounds a little bit basic, and this is especially true if you're using a dual nozzle printer like the Bamboo Lab H2D. Now, you have to have things set up properly. So if you look at the model here that I have on the screen, you can see it's got two colors, black and white. Now this is only going to reduce filament waste if you set it up properly. So in my case, I have one color, in this case the white color is attached to the external spool holder and the right nozzle is connected to my AMS2 Pro. So that way it will not have to swap colors or swap any filaments. Now if we slice the plate here, it will show us that we are saving two grams of filament and three changes compared to a printer with one nozzle. In comparison, if we now look on my P1S, I have sliced the same model and here we can see that we have a flushed amount. So this being a single nozzle printer, whenever it makes that swap between the black and the white, we are going to have to clear the black filament out of the nozzle and then load the white and then purge all of the old black that was in there and then continue purging so that we have a nice clean white to put on the second colors. So right here you can see that we are flushing um, a total of about 1.77 grams, like the two grams that uh, the H2D slicing said, and it's telling me that I'm changing my filament three times. So that is the number one way that you can reduce filament waste. The second tip is color to reduce filament swaps. Now before we get into that, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Hyper 3D. Now they have provided me access to their new Rodin software, um, which you can check out too. I will have links down in the description. And they have just recently reduced uh, their one, generation 1.5 and specifically this focal system, which gives a higher level of detail. So I would encourage you to come check out the website and see what they have to offer. Now, I wanted to make some color models um, that were going to be used specifically for a little project that I have uh, coming up. And I needed something that I really couldn't find out there and this was the perfect opportunity to use their software. So I wanted a, a goose uh, in a navy flight suit or something like that. So I came here and I created a couple of models and then we're gonna talk about coloring those in a bit. But I wanna point something out really quick about this, their software that I think is very unique. So there's a lot of uh, 3D generation software out there now um, but they stand out in a particular way. So they give you a lot of options here. This icon here is kind of your, your standard uh, setting, but then they allow you to, um, you can kind of control things. So you can create a box or use a 3D model as a bounding box. Um, you can upload a 3D model and then it's gonna take that shape and it's going to you know, use that as a parameter. Um, or you can define it, you can even define it if you have a 3D scanner, you can upload a point cloud and it will you know, use that as a constraint. All right, now into the model generation. You can do text uh, input, which is um, what I did for one of the models. And then what I find is very unique is the ability to, you can upload images and you can upload up to five images. Um, I think it's just five. 
but you can upload multiple images and then the AI is going to use those multiple images to come up with the final model. So it's not just a, a, a 2D image to a 3D model, it's, it can be multiple images. So here I have a folder of five different views of the P3 Orion and I can simply drop those over but I can throw all of these various views of the aircraft into Rodin and then hit generate and I can do multi-view and it will go ahead and come up with a model form. Now one of the really cool things about Rodin is they don't charge you. Um, you know, they have a whole subscription model and there, there are credits that you can uh, purchase or get with your subscription but they allow you to redo things and it's not until you actually generate the model that they charge you uh, credits and right now I think they're on sale you, you can generate a model for half a credit um, so that's pretty cool so you can see there's that redo button it lets you uh, take a number of stabs at things until you're really happy and you want to spend that credit I know a lot of other companies um, whether they give you credits or you're buying credits or have a subscription you're kind of like just throwing those credits at it and hoping that you get a good result that you're that you're happy with. But as you can see up here uh, with my credits, it's not until I actually confirm and I'm happy with the model that I spend it and then it will go ahead and generate that model for me. Once I've done that, I can then apply the geometry to my model. And now I have my model and then I can generate my material. And now I have the material on there. And again, if I'm not happy with that, I could redo that. Um, but once I've confirmed that, then I have the ability to download my final model. I can choose an OBJ, two or 4K um, textures, and then hit the download button and it will generate the textures and then it will create a zip file with everything that I need there and that only cost me half a credit. And there we have, now I have my model and I've got my base uh, object and then all the shading. Now if I open this in model viewer, just cause that's very basic, it's not gonna show me all the shading but you can see all the the fine level of detail that we got in there, even the little antenna on the bottom of the aircraft, uh, et cetera. So pretty darn cool. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of the models. You're gonna see here, I believe, this is one that we're going to look at here next, uh, this little kind of goose plane hybrid. Um, and we're gonna talk about our second tip and then we'll come back uh, to this guy here, which is going to be the final print. All right, now let's talk about that second tip. So coloring to minimize filament swaps. So here's my model, and you can see that I have colorized it. Now you can't really import, a, the, even though the rodent software will put a whole texture and give you an OBJ file, you can't directly import that into Bamboo Studio, and it's gonna have way too many colors on it anyway. So I wanted to add a little bit of color to give this uh, little model some character. So what I talk about, or what I mean when I say you wanna color to minimize filament swaps, is the way that this model is going to print. When you look at the feet down here, we're going to start with yellow, and then we're going to switch to white, and then the blue, you can see the blue section here, um, it's not overlapping. It's just basically, it's only, color, it's only got two colors that it ever has to deal with at one time. And then we come back up here to yellow, and then finally we go to green. Now, if we slice this, you can see what uh, what we're looking at and it's going to tell us that, you know again and this is how I set up my my model I had primarily white or I just had white filament in the left nozzle and then the three colors were in the AMS so it, we could, it could do the swap and again here it tells me I'm saving 42 grams of filament and 80 changes um, compared to a printer with one nozzle so because I don't have multiple colors ever printing at the same time be, be, besides my primary white and then a secondary color, I am going to minimize my filament waste. All right, tip number three, and that has to do with the model position. The model position will greatly impact how many filament swaps have to happen. So now we have the second model that I created using the Rodin software. 
And here, I have colored this not to minimize uh, filament swaps, but I colored it the way that I want it to actually be. Um, so you see there are times where we're gonna have multiple uh, colors that need to print at the same time that are both gonna be coming out of the AMS. Um, but let's take a look at how the, the software will position this model to print. Now if I use my auto positioning here, it will position the model to, to minimize the number of supports that are necessary as well as probably the you know, optimal way for everything to print, minimize overhangs, etc. Let's take a look at what happens when we slice this. All right, here we go. This is going to take 20 hour, 20 and a half, almost 21 hours uh, to print in this orientation. Now this is, again, this is optimized to minimize the overhangs and optimize you know, the print itself we have 571 filament changes because when you look at the layers, now I have multiple colors that are going to have to be printed. Pretty much every color is going to have to be printed on a lot of the layers. So 500 and 571 filament times 432 or 435 grams uh, total filament and we are flushing 288 grams if I position it this way. Now, let's go back. We're going to go back to prepare. We are going to put the model back the way that it was. So I'm gonna choose a face. We're gonna stand him back upright. Let's slice this again and see what happens. All right, now it is finished. Look at the difference that we have here. The time is now down to nine hours. So half the time to print this model. Our total filament is 205 grams, so that's over 200 grams that we save. We're only flushing 50 grams this way. And when you look at the way that it's going to print, very much like the last model that I showed you, here we have our orange, then it's gonna to switch to white, then we've got green and white, but again, based on the way that I have things set up, we've got white in one nozzle and then all the other colors are coming out of the AMS to the other nozzle. Then solid green, we've got some yellow and green that have to happen. So you can see just the positioning of the model, while this may not be the optimal um, position to print, it is far better for the, to reduce the number of filament swaps. So again, saving 209 grams and 370 changes, and that's just from a nozzle with one printer, but you can see just the orientation of the way that we set the model makes a massive difference in how much filament it's going to take to print this and how much filament we are wasting. My fourth tip on how to reduce filament waste is to listen to your slicer. So again, this is a little more specific for the uh, Bamboo Lab H2D, um, but it will suggest a filament grouping for you. So what you can see here on the screen, this is what it's suggesting on how I lay, or how I, how I load the AMS specifically. And if you're curious as to why it's choosing this, you can go over to the, uh, to the wiki and it tells you the filament saving mode. So if you choose filament saving mode, it will suggest the optimal uh, order for the filament to be loaded in the AMS, and that has to do with the colors and how it needs to purge, because if you go from, say, a dark color to a light color, you need to purge an, a lot of extra to make sure that that light color comes out you know, crisp and pure. So based on the color, it's going to recommend an order. If you go to convenience mode, then uh, basically however you have them loaded in there, it's going to use that, and that may end up uh, causing you to have to purge more filament just based on a non-optimal um, placement and you know having to go from light colors to dark colors to light colors etc um, and then you can also use the custom uh, mode but if you listen to your slicer it will give you the optimum uh, layout for everything and so yeah it's going to take you an extra minute or two to swap some uh, colors around in your AMS or AMS is, uh, but you are going to save your filament. All right, my fifth and final tip to reduce filament waste is paying attention to your time lapse. So 
This is something that I just recently learned, but um, especially here on the H2D, now even if you're printing with one color, if you enable smooth mode, and that moves the, the tool head out of the picture, puts it over by the poop shoot to take the picture, um, because, and I don't know if you can read what's on the screen here, but be, yeah, okay. Because the, uh, um, the nozzle may leak a little bit as it's doing that, it, create, it, it requires the prime tower to make sure that it can clean up the tool head before it goes back to printing. So if you enable smooth mode, um, kind of regardless of what's, you know, the number of colors that you're printing with, um, you are going to have that uh, prime tower required. And that's really a quality issue. You don't want to, your model uh, quality to suffer, suffer just because you're making a time lapse. All right, folks, there you have it. Those are the five tips. Now let's look at the results. Um, as we wrap this up. We're gonna talk about a few things. So, the model overall, this guy right here, the model with the supports was 80 grams. So this bag right here is all the supports that were utilized, and this was 24 grams, and the final model was 56 grams, right? And then we have our, our waste, which was also 56 grams, and then we have our prime tower. Uh, and this guy was 62 grams. So overall, I think that it, you saw the slicing. It was like 200 something grams. Um, now, a lot of people are probably going to say, you know, if you just got a multi-tool head printer, you wouldn't have to worry about all this waste. Is that completely true? Yes and no. Um, now, would something like a Prusa XL solve a lot of this waste? Absolutely. It would definitely remove this because we wouldn't have to be doing filament swaps. Now there are some downsides. Obviously you're limited to five colors unless you want to do manual swapping because you can't have multiple AMSs. But let's talk about the rest of the things. Are you going to reduce your support towers? No, you couldn't print this without these, not this particular model. So there's, what did I say, 24 grams that you're still going to have. What about the prime tower? You don't need this with an XL, right? Well, it's actually enabled by default uh, in Prusa Slicer. And they tell you, you can turn it off, but you could end up with some downsides to your print quality. The whole reason behind this prime tower is to repressurize the nozzle after it's been sitting idle. So, and you can see these little filament drips the bamboo slicer actually, this is planned. So when it comes back, it knows that there may be an issue with a little bit of you know, oozing filament as it reheats. And so it actually spends a little bit of extra time, does a little circle over here, and then it starts doing its thing to reprime the nozzle, make sure that the nozzle is clean before it goes back to the model. So you wouldn't necessarily save this. You're not gonna save this. You're gonna print this. So all in all, it might only be this that you're saving. So just some food for thought. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the content of today's video. Again, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hyper3D. Please go check out their site. Look at all the things they have to offer. I'm probably going to be doing a follow-up video on a lot of the free things that they offer because as I was checking out the site, I was blown away by the number of free offerings they have on that site. And I'm not talking about free, like, free trial. They're trying to get you to... to uh, you know, subscribe. This is just plain old free, really useful tools. But anyway, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, I would ask that you take a moment, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and hit that subscribe button and help us grow together. I appreciate all of the time that we get to spend together. So let's just keep on learning, burning, printing, and growing together. Take care, everyone.